Hey guys, Ivory here and I'm back finally. I know I've been gone for forever, but I'm back. I took a little break so I could do my YouTube the right way. You girl got you a vlogging camera. I'm a vlogger, I'm a, I'm a videographer. I just do this, I'm an actual YouTuber. I'm so hype, but I'm back with the content and I'm so ready to go and I'm so excited to drop these new topics and just new things to talk about. I'm so happy I'm back. Okay, so my topic for today, let's get right into it. I wrote it down, I got my notes. So my topic for today is the do's and don'ts of being a successful lash artist and having a successful business, okay? Um, if you do not know me, I am a licensed lash artist here in Dallas, Texas. I'm at the North Park Mall and I love everything beauty, everything lashes. I love looking good, I love feeling good because you we all know when you look good, you feel good. So I just love everything that pertains to beauty. Let's talk about becoming a lash artist, okay? So for one thing, there are steps that you have to do when becoming a lash artist and you have to follow these steps. Like you don't have to do them in the right order, but you have to complete these steps, okay? No matter what order you do them in. Becoming a lash, art now, lash artist nowadays has become really, really popular. And I just really want to touch base on some things that will help you if you're trying to become one, if you are one, and if you're trying to take your business to the next level. These are some things that you should look into that will really help you, okay? I really want to give you some tips and tricks like if you're trying to take your business to the le next level, if you're trying to get into it, and if you're just thinking about it, I really want to give you like my foundation of the do's and the don'ts, okay? Red flag, green flag, okay? <laughs> Basically. So, number one, taking the right lash course. I think that this is like the first thing for everything. If you're trying to become a lash artist, it's really, really important. You have to take the right lash course, okay? I hear so often about people saying that um, they took a horrible lash class or they didn't learn anything in their lash class. And I really genuinely be like, how? Like, what happened? What did you do? What didn't you do? Did you not do your research? Like, what is it? And a lot of times people take these lash classes with these lash artists because of their followers or maybe because they like their work. It's a lot of things of why you're taking a course with a certain person but please be mindful when you're taking a class with anybody not everybody will be suitable for you as their teacher they might teach better to somebody else but for you and the way you attain information it might not be that teacher is right for you so be be careful with who you're picking when you pick your teacher you should be able to ask them anything you should see you two can connect or what on whatever level and if it's just not there don't force it don't just put your money where you have not done any research and you should also be getting to by somebody who is a licensed professional anybody can teach you with just a certificate you literally print a certificate on canva and give it to somebody you need to be getting taught by somebody who is actually licensed the way i look at it is that they are actually taking their craft and they're actually investing in it and they're taking it to the next level and they're taking it as serious and it's important to them i literally had that down in my on my notes my notes as the first one okay and then you also want to make sure that you are taking the right classes so when you're taking a classic class i do not promote one day classic classes i just not i'm not for it i'm not for you learning all of this information in one day is so much information and it's very very tedious so you're going to start with classic we all know that right and then the next one you should be taking after that is volume i feel like classic first volume i'm not into duo classes because i feel like it's just too much information to learn in one in one class and it's too much information to learn in one day and i feel like for your classic class you should be practicing on a model you should not just be practicing on a mannequin it's not going to do you any justice if you're just doing it on an actual per on an actual model you actually need to practice on a person because you and that a person and that model are two different things okay the model is way harder because you're going to be actually working on actual people so you need to be practicing on actual people and not just on a mannequin so a great way to look at how you're taking your class do they offer live model training within your course and is your course longer than one day you should not be just doing everything in one day it's just no way that you can learn all that information placement the right weights everything the right type of quality of lashes all of that needs to go into it so you should, in theory um sanitation you should definitely be learning that and it does not take one day it's way longer than one day at least a two-day course at least that was my first step so the do's now let's go right into the second step for the do's as well so the second one is getting on social media so i'm not really into people just being on one platform i'm really into you being on all platforms so i feel like if you're going to get into it get into it the right way but if you're just getting started definitely social media is going to be your first step because it's free you know what I'm saying? And you don't know where you're going to go with it. So I definitely think that you just putting it out there on social media just to see what it does. It's definitely a great tool. But if you are further along and you know this is what you want, this is what you want to do and you want to take it to the next step, you need to be on Google, 
Yelp. You need to be on every platform there where you can promote your business for free and you definitely need to be incorporated so that you can actually be looked at as a real business and get all the grants all these free money from covid you definitely want to take advantage of that always look at social media like it's a portfolio it's like your website before having a website so if you don't have a website definitely social media is going to be your website so you want to make sure your, your social media is clean precise and you follow the grid and you want to make sure that it's really cohesive and we can actually tell what you do client selfies getting good content having a content calendar i'm not really into a content calendar but i hear it a lot so having a content calendar um informative videos we actually want to know you know what you're talking about and quote sometimes having those breakups of all the pictures and just putting like a white or blue or purple whatever your color scheme is for your business putting those quotes in there something that we all can relate to being transparent all of those things will help you with your content on social media. Taking great pictures, knowing your angles, knowing your client angles. We should not be able to see up your client's nose. We should not be able to see in their mouth or what they're chewing. We should not, like, all the extra is not needed. So let's get clean, clear, precise work. That's what I mean when I say that. Number three, okay. So getting clients. Oh my God, I hear this so often. How do I get clients? How did you get clients? How do you do this? How you do that? Listen. The better you get, the more clients you get. That's just facts. That's just how it goes. The better you are at it, the better your clients will come to you. And that's all goes into marketing and branding. The way you get clients is how you market. Duh. How you branding? How are you branding your business? So if you don't know what marketing and branding is, definitely look into it before you even get started, okay? And if you are starting, you already established and you need to figure out which marketing strategy or which branding strategy you need to go with, definitely look it up and see which one works better for you. See what the definition is and see which way you should need to go. And definitely do your research. Everything in life is about research. I don't care what anybody says. Do your research. What might work for me might not work for you, okay? So I'm gonna give you some tips on how to get clients. Um, these work for me. If you do not know, I am new to Dallas. I've only been in Dallas for a year. A year and like three months. And I'm already like rolling. So I'm gonna tell you what worked for me. And I hope that this works for you too. Um, take notes. To take what works for you and leave what doesn't. Or maybe tweak it. You know what I'm saying? So definitely look into it. And here are some things that I did, okay? So I got three brand ambassadors when I moved here to Dallas. And I made sure they were really diverse. I did, I made sure everybody did not look like me, okay? And I, that's what I mean by diverse. You want to make sure they, that they don't look like you. Not everybody, okay? So what I did was I found three people that did not look like me. But they had great social influence on social media. When I mean great social influence, I mean that I actually looked through their content. I actually looked at their content. I actually looked at what they looked like and see if there was somebody who I wanted to um, target to my brand and speak to my co my consumers. So that means you have to know your targeted audience. So out of those three, out of my ambassadors, only one of them stuck with me. It, it works and it don't work sometimes. You know what I'm saying? So I only kept one. I did them for about like maybe six months, building my business with them, and they did not last with me, which is okay. But one of them did, so I'm okay with that too. And she's a great brand ambassador. Um, get you somebody that's a dental hygienist, a nurse, somebody who like is like the school mom. Um, if you have a girl, a girlfriend who has a lot of friends, that can be kind of tricky because her friends might not be into it or they might not want to pay your prices. So that can be kind of tricky. You got to be really careful with stuff like that. I had one like that and she didn't bring me really any clients. So get you somebody that work at the gym, somebody that's really into their look, somebody who is going to represent you well, okay? A lot of my clients act just like me so i feel like that's because i kind of target people who look and act just like me not even noticing it so you might want to do the same thing just be yourself i really just be myself honestly and i feel like my work speaks for itself so we kind of align you know it's really easy and also i'm really big on referrals as well um i feel like everybody should have a referral program within their business if you do not know a referral is the best form of a compliment so if somebody refers you if one of your clients refers you to other clients you definitely give them a discount always for that client and the client that told them about you definitely give them a discount it's definitely needed and it's definitely worth it it's definitely the word of mouth is the best form of a compliment i don't care what anybody says i don't care if you don't, your, honestly, your brand ambassadors don't even have to have thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of followers. One of my brand ambassadors has way less followers, followers than me, and she actually brought me all my clients, like 90% of them. So, she's a great brand ambassador. I hang out with her outside of work, and I be right with her, and she literally be telling people about me right in front of me. So, you definitely want a brand ambassador who you can be friends with. It's definitely clutch. And she's a dental hygienist, and she works at a gym. 
I done knocked off two things off my checklist. She's beautiful, so it's like another thing off my checklist too. And she has a lot of girlfriends. Another thing, another thing off the checklist, you know? Just, and I found her on Instagram. It pays to be nice. <laughs> but definitely make sure you do your research when you're trying to get a brand ambassador. That is definitely a way to help you get clients and you want to diversify your clientele. So make sure you get diversified brand ambassadors. You don't want to get a brand all brand ambassadors who look like you. And if you are in college or if you're young and you're a lash tech, definitely figure out who is your targeted audience. And if you are an established lash tech, figure out if you don't like your clients, figure out what do your clients look like and what do you want your clients to look like? So that when you start marketing and branding towards what you want, you can know which way to sway. Your hashtags definitely play a role into getting clients and your pictures and your work definitely go into you getting to clients as well. If we cannot, literally, your work will definitely bring who you want to be as your client. So you definitely want your work to match up to what you want your clients to look, up, look like as well. Number four of the do's is pricing, budgeting, and products. So I put all three of these together because I feel like they kind of all tie in together and some form of another so pricing because you want your pricing to be good you want to have a good price point i think a lot of people sleep on pricing they feel like if they start cheap they get more clients which is not necessarily true honestly a lot of people be skeptical about why you're so cheap and they might try you out but they might not come back and the key to lashing is getting them to come back because that's how you make your money you get your money from those refills so you definitely want your clients to come back so you want to have a great price point you definitely want to do your research and see what these people in your area what are they charging so definitely look at somebody who's doing better than you or you, somebody where you who you look up to somebody that's on your level and somebody that's in your community let's see what they're charging and let's see how much you should be charging because you should be right around those numbers right in between those numbers somewhere if you're better than them better than the person in your community definitely more than them um if you're in an office or a studio wherever you're at definitely you want to charge a little bit more money if you have your license you definitely want to charge more money so definitely look at today and remember lashing is a luxury so definitely you want to have a great price point that matches up with your budget and you want to have your products come out of your budget which comes out of your price point you see how they all tie together so the next one the fifth one is this one's kind of vague but it's definitely needed Number five is take your business serious from the beginning. And I'm saying that because a lot of us get into lashing and we look at it like, okay, I'm just going to do it as a side hustle. Or when we first take it, we don't take it serious. Like it takes us like a year to get back into it. We quit and then come back and then quit and come back. Yeah, it's a lot of us that are like that. So I'm saying take it serious from the beginning because you honestly get what you what you put into something is what you get out of it. If you put half ass work into it, you're gonna get half ass results out of it. So definitely take it serious from the beginning. So before you go into it, have a plan of action. So know what you're trying to do with it. Know where you see yourself. So you have to definitely invest in your courses and just know what you're doing. Like definitely research it i keep saying that throughout this video because research is imperative and we don't do it enough so definitely research what needs to be done and take it serious from the beginning you never know what a year of dedication and discipline can take you so those are my five do's i hope that they are really really helpful um i try to be really specific with things um i know i talk kind of fast so just bear with me but those are my five do's and let's jump right into the don'ts okay these are my five don'ts. Not providing good customer service. This is not to slander, bash anybody, but these all tie into your business. You have to have good customer service. We have to be able to contact you. You have to respond. You have to give, give good professional responses. And you have to just have some type of policies and procedures in place for people to follow within your business. That falls into customer service as well, okay? You cannot just be winging it. Um, having a scheduling site helps with customer service. Service. like booking should be really easy just get with the times we should not have to call you to book an appointment you should have a site where we can click put our information in and book and honestly it just helps because if somebody does a no call no show you can literally just charge them from the booking site so my second one is not investing in the right material and classes whether it's about business or about lashes okay so i already my first one for my dudes was going into the right classes now what i mean by the other classes or materials for your business i mean like if you know you're not good with marketing 
hire somebody to help you with your marketing and invest in the right marketing person um there's somebody named in, in dallas her name is house of joy you know, guys know i love chastity from declare marketing invest like just do your research talk to them see if you mesh well see if they can help you take your business to the next level and have your questions already written out when you go to a lash class already have your classes written out for your lash class for your teacher if you're doing a branding and marketing coach have your class you have your questions already written out don't go into something blindsided that is my biggest don't you're not doing your research you don't maybe you don't know what to ask but you to be ask questions to other lash techs talk to other beauty professionals and talk to other marketing marketing coaches and just ask them pick their brains you know what i'm saying take them out to lunch do a discovery call see what you need to know and what you don't need to know and if it doesn't apply for your business let it fly but you need to know what you need help with and what you don't know and also don't be scared to invest as well that's where it goes into having the right investment because the right investment can take you to the next level so definitely don't be scared to invest your money but definitely make smarter money investing in decisions you don't want to use spending your money on any and everything and you're not getting anything from it so definitely just know what you're investing in okay so my third don't is not posting every day so this ties into my social media do so you want to post every day whether it's on any type of social platform because honestly social media is like one of them things where is though if you're not posting frequently we kind of forget about you so you kind of want to stay up on it and having quality content definitely plays a key role into that. You could be posting every day and your content can be BS. So you want to make sure that we can actually see your work and we're actually loving it. We can actually feel it. We can actually say, oh my God, I can see this on me. Oh my God, I got to have it. Oh my God, I need that. It needs to be one of those feelings when you're posting. And we cannot feel it if it's not cringing into our body and our soul, then you're not doing it. We should be able to see what you're posting. We should be able to feel it, love it, want it. That's my 2022 quote. Feel it, see it, want it. We need to do those things. So number four, okay? This is, number four is major for me, okay? And I think that it should be major for everybody. <sighs> Pricing. Okay, guys, I really want to talk about pricing. So you have to remember that pricing is imperative for your business because it's how you eat. It's how you buy your supplies. It's what your budget is based off of, what you're paying, what you're getting paid. And you want to be able to pay yourself as well. You want to be able to take a cut from your business and be able to reinvest in your business as well, right? So I really want to tackle pricing. So I think a lot of times people charge less money thinking that it's going to attract more clients when in all actuality it attracts less clients if that makes any sense and i said this in my dues because we think that if we charge less people would not will come to us more whereas though we think where you charge more you might not get the right get enough clients right and i think that this stigma with lashing has come around where so i want to do eight people in one day so that's working harder and not smarter so we want to always work smarter and not harder so why not charge a competitive price where so you could do maybe four or five people instead of eight people in one day and you're making just as much money or the same amount or maybe even more and you're doing less people and you're still hitting your price point number five okay so number five is have a plan it's crazy to me how my last um do's and don'ts kind of are like kind of vague but it's kind of like they kind of everything kind of ties together like they bounce off of each other and i didn't even notice that i was doing it or whatever i digress but have a plan so i actually really wrote out a lot of things for have a plan so if you see me reading it i'm really not reading word for word but it's they're really key points so i really want to touch on them so when i say have a plan you cannot just jump into something whether you are new to it or you are getting established or whether you are established you need to have a plan with everything that you do whether it's your business plan your marketing plan your branding plan you need to have a plan with everything you're doing okay so if you're just getting started your plan is to do your research and to know what you're getting yourself into and have a list of everything that you need to do and what classes you're going to take and when you're taking these classes how many people you need to practice on when are you going to practice and just the list list goes on right so you need to have a plan of action if you're trying to do lashes full time you need to have a plan of action of how many clients do i need to do in one day for me to be considered full time 
how much do I need to charge for my clients to be considered full-time wear so I can take a good percentage home and still be able to pay my bills and reinvest back into my business if you have an office how much do your office cost should your office be charge how much should your office cost for you to still make a profit for you to be able to pay yourself get your products everything you need to have all of those things right now you need to have a plan of action you cannot go into something blindsided you cannot just do it just to do it you can't be just winging it it's not going to you're not going to go far with that kind of mindset so you definitely want to have a plan of action and a plan of execution so those are my do's and don'ts so i'm going to go over it one more time those are my do's and don'ts so my five do's are taking the right lash course getting on social media in all platforms to help build your business getting clients um pricing budgeting and products quality products that's another the difference i'll do a video on being able to tell quality products over regular products and shopping on amazon or shopping with somebody on instagram i'll definitely do a video on that as well um also taking your business serious from the beginning those are my five do's okay so my five don'ts are not providing good customer service, not investing the not investing into your business the right way or making the right investments within your business. So you can be investing in things and it don't do you any good. That's what I mean by that. And also posting every day is my third one. My fourth one is charging less thinking that you are going to make more doesn't really help you and also and, and make more and also bring you more clients doesn't really help you and my fifth one is having a plan having a plan of action and a plan of execution and definitely always remember that you want to write everything down so that you can see what you're saying and actually answer your questions and have actual times for you to do things so don't just say i want to do this and don't have no time on it you want to make it you want to have goals okay so actually when you do this execution have a goal for it like how do you want to get there what's the goal Thanks guys for tuning in to my video and these are my five do's and don'ts to having a successful last business or any type of business or anything that you're doing in your life. These are my do's and don'ts that you can implement within your business and make sure you follow me on all social platforms and subscribe to my channel. I'm back. Thanks guys.